<laughs> Maybe you got bunking hair on your nose. 501, 81 degrees in October. Absolutely beautiful day. But all good things must come to an end. Do you see that? 28 degrees next Monday. What the crap? That's too cold. 37, that's fine. 34, eh, not great. It's time. Time to move the plants and some, well, that's not even really what's happening in this video. I have to get the palm trees ready to go off to winter storage. I went ahead and called the people who pick them up and they said they're coming tomorrow. I should not have to call people who are gonna show up at my house with a crane and a semi truck. I would hope that they would reach out to me because you know somebody has to be here, but I've learned my lesson. I knew that I should give them a call and find out when they're going to be here. Glad I made the call because there is a lot to do to get the plants ready. Gotta get all the stuff cleared out of the pots and get the drip disconnected from them. Need to go around and figure out what I want to keep, what's gonna go away with them. They don't guarantee the annuals, like whatever you underplant the palm trees with. That's not guaranteed to last. They, they only get, well, they don't even technically guarantee the palm tree, but if it dies, they replace it. They're pretty good about that. For the most part, though, I think this is the only plant that I have things underneath that I might want to pull out. I have a couple of bromeliads over there I need to do something with. I'll probably pull up the heliconias that are in here. They have some cold damage. It got really cold here the other night. Dropped down to what well, was supposed to drop down to 32. We had a frost advisory came through very last minute, and I just mad dashed the plants inside. Moving the plants inside, that part's pretty much done. It was a nice look into what I would keep <laughs> and what I would ditch if there were an emergency. There was just something going on Saturday night that I was not willing to miss even a moment of, even for the plants. Well, that's not fully true. I got the plants in that needed to go in. Monstera, Thai constellation, that's inside the metanillas in there, a bunch of the orchids, and I don't know, up maybe pop the camera in there at some point and show everybody, but there's gonna be so much time in that grow space in the coming months that I don't feel the need to jump into it just yet. And it's not organized. Toss some on the ground, put some on the shelf, some are just sitting on a table, like there's no organization or anything to it. In 28 degrees, for the most part, everything I have left out here, that's not a temperature I'm all that concerned about. The hibiscus though, eh, they can take it. They've taken it before. Sometimes they'll defoliate, same thing with the croton. I don't get terribly upset when the hibiscus and croton defoliate because it makes it a lot easier to clean them off and do pest control when you bring them in. They don't look great for a few weeks while they flush back out, but in some ways it works out to be beneficial. So I'll make up my mind with all that. I don't really have to worry about that in this video. I need to get the palm trees ready. That's the first thing I need to do. So I'm gonna have to start pulling things out so I can get to the pots, cut things out, get the drips disconnected and have one Last look at the beautiful containers over here, which are, they're on their last leg. It's time to go ahead and say goodbye to everything that's planted in these. You can see they're starting to sup. I mean, well, it still looks pretty dang good on camera, but in person, you can see all the little holes and where things are getting sparse and the discoloration and some of the foliage. This would be when I would give them a cutback or a few weeks ago it would have been, but there's no point since, well, I'm gonna pull them all out because these are all going away to the greenhouse. But the wheelbarrow over here, just ready to start chucking stuff in there, get a move on things. I suppose, oh, oh, I just remembered something, crap. I totally forgot that during the last garden tour I had said I was going to do a separate video just talking about the palm trees. I'm really wishing I hadn't said that now. I don't have time. It's gonna take me like an hour to shoot another video and get back to all this. All right, need a moment, gotta figure some stuff out. And we're back with 10% battery. Oh, come on. We good, what's the level? 100% on both of them, that's better. I just, all right, you're gonna be knocking into the tripod this whole time? Probably. Got that video filmed or the beginning of that video filmed because it's gonna be about all the palm trees, not just the ones that go off for winter storage. I just start off by talking about the ones that are leaving tomorrow. That made the most sense. We get this pot cleared out. That looks fantastic. Wondering if I should go ahead and disconnect the drip now. The only reason I'm thinking that I wouldn't is because it's being watered right now. It's running on that one. I'm gonna hold off on pulling that one for right now because it's getting its last drink of the summer or fall. What did you just drop in there? What was that? What'd you drop in the water? The ball, why'd your ball sink? That's not supposed to be down there. This is, this is gonna be rough. I don't wanna do it. This looked so good this year, but I can't get to the drip without pulling this stuff out. And this, none of this will survive the winter time at the storage facility. They don't guarantee did I already talk about that? I think I did. One thing I am looking forward to with this though, getting the stuff out, is being able to have a nice look at these trunks. I really appreciate an anonymity of 
palm instead of adenite. Well, yeah, an adenidia trunk with nice bulbous growth that has lots of rings on it. And these are at a height where you really couldn't appreciate that with annuals growing around them. Something I talked about when I planted these up, about how the two different edinidias didn't match just because this one had more trunk than the other one. And if you're framing a walkway, it's nice for things to look like they go together. A lot to choose from. They were all just really wildly different sizes. What's in here? It's just the, oh, the Supertunia honey with the jazzberry. One of the honeys that I planted did really well. That's this one for a honey, for a Supertunia honey, it did well. When I planted these up, I talked about how I wasn't sure I'd combine them with the Supertunia Vistas just because the honeys for me have never been as strong of a grower. I wasn't sure what was going to happen with them, but they came out looking okay, at least in this container. It would be a lot faster to reach in here and pull these out by hand, but yeah, boy, put the pots too close to the edge of the pool this year. So if I get dirt splattering all over the place, it's going right in that water. Get that drip out. Look at those trunks. That looks nice. I love having these things planted up, but you got to admit, it just hits different when you can actually see the trunks of the palm, doesn't it? You can do something smaller in these next year. Perhaps it'll stay lower or just hope that next year there'll be at least the one trunk right there will be big enough to be able to actually see what's going on in those containers. Uh, hopefully a decent amount of growing probably got a good three to four rings on each trunk those two i think had maybe one one ring right at the very base where the soil meets the bottom of the trunks there that's pretty good love those trunks and you probably want to see the entire plant but right now i'm just I'm so focused on those beautiful trunks not going to be the same story on this one because it's the one that doesn't match that one i'm sure nobody's interested in watching me do what i just did all over again i'm gonna get this one cleaned out now and move on to the next quick and easy drips disconnected i'm wondering if i should pull these out of those containers for them they're bringing like a whole crew of people and it's just me here i feel like it'd be easier for them to lift them out of those containers because I don't, I don't feel like it. I already had my workout. I didn't realize they were coming today. An hour ago, I finished a four mile swim. So my arms and legs kind of loose and jello like. I don't, I don't know. I don't see myself pulling that out of there. Not right now, maybe in the morning. So need a little bit of recovery time to get those out. This one, eh, it's a little smaller, but probably not a good idea. But look at this. Now there's something to be proud of. It's, a lot of plants with the wheelbarrow overflowing two containers Boy, that's surprising where there were two sun and four sun impatients in each one two sweet potato vines tons of petunias i was looking sharp right now lots of color that's that's a nice look for like five minutes and it's all gonna wilt and start to die all right the adenidia palm what i know this back here the cordon fredicosa i didn't even pop that one in there it's just sitting on top of the soil maybe with a drip head in it or a root Yep, it just had a little root down in there. So that can just hang out over there. And then do I want to keep anything that's in this? Those little heliconia starts? Eh, probably not. I don't think I need to. This is just a curcuma. Probably a good idea to come in here and at least cut it back because otherwise they'll be tempted to rip it all out. If you have tons of stuff growing around the base of the plants, it makes it harder for them to water the plants. It's a curcuma. I'm not that attached to it. It's just an annual that I tossed in here. Vinca did very well this year. The flowers on it really did lull out big time, though, because the sun shifted. Always does, right around August, and you just don't get as much growth out of them anymore. Kept on growing, but the flowers on them got to be much more sparse. Isn't it pretty, though? Cora Cascade Strawberry. I think. I'm not positive. Ring fling caladium. This was its second year in this container. It seemed to survive the winter in the storage just fine. An okay amount of growth out of that one. Oh, what about this right here? The alocasia. This is a variegated alocasia. It isn't super variegated right now. This one may have revert. No, there's some variegation in there. It's not getting a ton of light, so uh, the variegation is kind of minimal. On there, I'm going to give these a cut back. I'm going to pull the tuber. I want to keep that. Cut that one way, way, way back. I'm going to hold on to this tuber and get that potted up and hold on to this one in the growth space just to be safe. These are ridiculously expensive. I didn't pay much for it, but to replace it would cost a fortune. But the cost on everything has gone to hell, so now they cost a fortune. So if that were to die, it'd be hard to replace. Spring fling, caladium, give that a cut back. Again, they're getting the cutbacks that they're down below the soil surface that the people who work at the facility aren't going to be tempted to pull them out so that they have better access to the base of the plant. The heliconias, I don't know. Like, they just didn't really do much in this spot. And I really don't feel like nursing these right now. I'm not attached to them. 
I have the Flamingo over here. The Flamingo, which was one that rotted out on me last year because just couldn't quite get the heat for it. What's up with you tonight, camera? Come on. You can see there's one tiny little bit of something going on there. I'll throw this into some potty mix and hold on to this one, but the rest, eh, they can go. Gonna cut them back to the surface soil and hope for the best. Maybe they will return next year. I have had palm trees come back with heliconias in them that would re-sprout them when things got nice and warm outside. So maybe that'll be the case with this one. What is this? What did I just cut out of here? Oh, this was that Diplodinia that I really liked. And I just, uh-oh, where are you? Okay. Gonna hold on to that. Not a Diplodinia, a Diamantina from Proven Winners. And it had some of the prettiest flowers on it, which I totally forgot about because I mentioned the sun situation and past couple months, almost several weeks. It just hasn't been as bright over here. Totally forgot that that was in this container. So this plant should be ready to go. Rips pulled out. I don't really even know where to begin with this spot. There's so much sitting in front of this Robolini palm that I gotta move. Picking stuff up and moving it. Ooh, that, that looks sad. I'm going to miss having all the color over here in this corner. Mostly just from this one impatient right here. And then the massive begonia in the background. I'll leave the begonia. Those usually overwinter in that greenhouse really, really well. The patients are gonna have to go for sure. It's way too much in there. Can't really get to the surface of the soil. And I wanna make sure this plant gets well watered and that it's easy for them to water. And I don't want them to have to, you know, go crazy pulling stuff out of these containers either. The Cordelin Bolero. Bolero, whatever it was called, I don't remember. I'm going to leave that because I tried to pull it out and it's rooted way down in there, which means that it has a decent chance of surviving. The cordolins don't need a ton of hydration during the winter time. Neither do the dragon wings begonias, which is why I think that those usually do really well storing over the winter time. They do just fine in the drier conditions. When they pull it out tomorrow, I may sneak in and give it a quick cut back, but the drip's disconnected. The path is clear and that's, I think that's about all I need to do. I just need to pull some drip out from the bottom of these queen palms here. And then, who do I need to do anything with the Alexander Palm? Probably. More things to cut back. Need to get the light out of there. Heliconias are looking pretty crummy anyways because, you know, it got really cold the other night. Those are pretty much the only plants that I left out and seem to suffer any kind of cold damage. Everything else looks pretty good. It's not the Heliconias. Let's look at the Pharaoh's masks. They gotta go. Gotta cut them back. Was that painful to watch? Was it even in frame? I didn't even look at the screen. Get the drip pulled out of this. It isn't even hooked up or running. Well, it is hooked up, but I have it. It's not on. You can see it's, well, apparently it's kind of on. There's water coming out. But I have these stakes shut off. You can turn the tops of these so water doesn't come out. Looks like there's one that has some water, maybe two. The rest of them are shut off though. All right, I think we're good to go. Last look, say goodbye to the palm trees. I don't know. If I'll be able to film them taking them, probably won't just because they're supposed to show up in the morning and there's a chance of rain. So this is, this is it. Bye bye palm trees. No more palm trees. We'll pick back up later and get back to doing some more stuff. They look so much bigger without all the stuff underneath them, don't they? I was inside this morning. Oh, I decided not to do the cut to just everything being gone because I realized that I should probably pull these palm trees out from these containers for them, just like a, Kind of a liability thing. It's wet and slippery out here. I'm not really worried about them getting hurt. I, mean, I don't want anybody to get hurt, of course, right? But it's the pottery. If it's going to get broken, I'd rather me be the one to break it because then I can only be mad at myself. So uh, I'm going to go and find a tarp or something to lay these down on, pull the Adenidia palms out of. But first, I just wanted to take a moment to just appreciate how nice they look. It was beautiful having them planted up all summer long, but I don't mind this. I'm not saying that I'm not going to plant them up next year, but this is, this is a nice view too. They look so much larger. I have a much more fond appreciation for how absolutely beautiful these palm trees are. They put out tons of growth. The trunks got some really decent girth on them. I mean, look at this one. Nice thick trunk. Couldn't even tell with all that stuff planted around it from over here. Look at that. What a great angle, especially if the ginger was still in bloom all the way. Looked beautiful with the flowers, but the palm trees themselves, this looks so nice. Goes back to that classic saying, trim the bushes, make the trees look bigger. They're looking pretty good. It looks so much larger and more full. And even the pool looks bigger in person. On the camera, I don't know if it was all that noticeable. Also, there's a, it's not a haze. I don't know if it's gonna show on camera in person. It's very foggy out here because the pool is just steaming just clouds of steam coming off of there the water's like 94 right now 
and the temperature dropped to 50. That interferes with the lens and the shots that I want to get this up on a tripod. That's what's going on there. Just standing here looking at the palm tree, regretting all of my decisions to go out that way. And then I'm just gonna lay it down, hopefully without breaking the pot. Nice and slow. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Scary part's over. Try and get this done quickly since it's starting to drizzle, but I think that this is, um, I'm pretty sure that's rooted itself into the bottom. Come in here with a narrow shovel and just try and get some of the roots out from those annuals that were in there and hopefully that'll kind of create somewhat of a pocket. Getting some of the soil out from around the lip of the pot that's inside the pot. Well, loosen things up. There's a big chunk of sweet potato vine. Oh, shit. That's really in there. Uh, usually these just slide right out. There must be a lot of roots going down to the bottom of that pot. It's raining too much for the camera. I got to put you all away. We'll be able to have that done here in a minute before it starts raining too hard. Made a little bit of progress. Not much, but I have found a rhythm here where if I just get in here and just very gently up and down, can scoot it out of there. So I figured there's great big chunks of sweet potato vines stuck in there. Yeah, look at that. I'm gonna put that away. I know if I throw it on the ground, the dog will grab it. And these are toxic. <laughs> ah. Whoa. Uh, if those are all palm roots, we have a big problem. <laughs> oh, sh. There's no way, right? That can't all be palm. They're way too big to be from the sweet potato vines though oh no you can see the pot at some point cracked open and what the problem is is that i can't I can't send this away for winter storage with all these roots hanging out the sides of the pot it's just gonna die i don't have a pot that i can put this in to send it ah oh, crap i could tuck it back in there but that's not going to help the issue of this plant still being inside of a container that would then be inside of another container. Looks like the pot split open over here too. Jeez. I think I'm just going to use my fingers and get as many of the other roots out of here as I can and just figure it out. Well, <laughs> they're going. But there was a big mess, I'm about to say a huge mess. Not so much. I got most of it cleaned up. Adenidia's two queens, pygmy date palm, what was over here? Adenidia. That Adenidia is gone. This big queen palm has gone. The big bird of paradise, which you almost never saw, is gone. But there's still one remaining. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. They didn't bring a crane. Don't know why. I know that the people who run the place are out of town. And apparently they're the ones who scheduled the crane. But they knew they were coming here, so I don't really... I don't know what happened there. But that's... It's too big. Too big for them to take by hand. I've been in communication with them. Hopefully they'll be able to get somebody out here very, very early next week to take the Alexander Palm. I'm not going to draw any conclusions or have any kind of emotions over it until things have moved forward. For now, it's just is what it is. This is done, taken care of, all cleaned up. I've been debating planting these up with something just because just having empty containers around, I can't. I can't do it. I could move them. I want to though, they look nicer. I could take these, these keep blowing over. It's really windy today. Throw one of those in there. Get that one in on that side. There we go, look at that. That looks fantastic. Nah, I know, not really. Just a place to keep those from blowing over. I don't plan on overwintering those cannas. They're clearance plants, they can go when the fall comes around. I had debated maybe pulling the hydrangeas, those two down there, the two hydrangea standards and bringing them over here to this end. That was something I'd actually thought about originally when I potted them up down there was, well, in the fall and the winter, I can bring those over here and have some more interest. But if I bring them over here to this end, I'm still going to have the same thing going on in my head, which is just that I don't like the empty space on the other side. It'll feel uneven, so I think I'm just going to make peace with this right here. Not actually having the cannas in there, but it's, just, it's fine. The pots can be empty. No big deal. I say no big deal, but I also think that this is a great opportunity to do some winter planters, like maybe just a couple dirt cheap arbs with some cabbage and some pansies going around them. I don't know why I would do that since there's gonna be a cover over this thing in about, I don't know, four to six weeks this will be covered up and then no matter what you do, it's gonna look terrible. Have, I hate having, having the pool cover out, out here. It just, it ruins the whole backyard. It looks so ugly, but it's necessary. So, you know, you just live with it, but I don't see a reason to have nice decorative planters around the great big tarp 
that's going to be covering this. It's fine. Everything's fine. This is good. Have a gap here now. I think I'll probably just pull these together. That would work. I had thought about throwing a pot in. That reminds me. Hold on. Speaking of pots, I have this one here that I should not be holding by that end because there's probably spiders over there. Yeah, look at that. Lots of spider webs. So I had thought about taking one of these big pots and putting it over there and doing what I just talked about. It's just like a cheap arb, some kind of evergreen for the winter time. But it would be smarter to put that in place where that adenidia palm goes so that in the spring when the palm's here, I can just pull that right out and the palm can slip right in there. Unless I need it for something and then I'll pull it up and use it for doing something else. I don't think there's anything left to do out here. This is a very busy week. Not so much with the gardening stuff, just life. October, such a busy month. Everybody's got all their things going on. It's like everybody waits to have all their events until October. During the summer, they go, oh, it's too hot. We'll wait till October and have all of our events inside. This feels weird. Big gap over here. I still have some picking up to do. As you can see, there's still stuff strung about. I don't mind having it open over here. Imagine this just staying open, clean up all the pottery that's laying around and make it look nicer, even the gravel out, but Oh, I'm kind of digging that. I had been toying around with the idea of uh, switching the queen palm with the adenidia. I'll talk about this in a separate video that'll be out in a week or two. The queen palm grows right into that pine tree now, and I just think it would make more sense for it to be over here where it can stand up and shine and be able to see it standing up like the canopy of the palm tree above the umbrella from the other side of the patio and have the adenidia over here where it's down lower and it's something you can appreciate more because when you're sitting over here at the table, the ad or not the adenidia, the queen palm right there, you just see a big pole. You just see the trunk. It's not that exciting, but the adenidia, you get a little bit more character out of it. That just doing things that way just makes a lot more sense in my head to have the shorter palm over here and the taller one that would be up filling in this airspace right there. And it would fill it up. That queen palm got huge. It has a big canopy on it. So that's something to think about, not something to think about right now. It has been very windy. Plants are blowing over, blowing over left and right, which is fine it's that time of year they can lay down have a rest and all of the things that were over there around the <laughs> pygmy date palm and the queen palms those are now hanging out over here where they're going to get a little bit more exposure i'm probably going to be moving a lot of these in over the weekend or early next week very early like three to four weeks earlier than i've ever moved the plants in before but just to be real about this it's kind of nice I'd rather get them in, have the plants inside. I don't have to worry about them anymore. It's a weight off the shoulders to be done with it and have them inside, not have to worry and watch the forecast constantly. That's why all the valuables are inside and everything that's left out here right now are the things that could either handle cold temperatures in the upper 20s or they're plants that I just I don't really care about <laughs> or I don't want them anymore. I've got some more cleaning to do out here, mostly leaves. Gotta get the leaves out of the pool. I'm gonna try and get another swim in tonight and then I think we'll pick up in the morning because I am still toying with the idea of maybe doing something with these containers. We'll figure that out tomorrow. This guy. One second, once out. Two seconds later, once back in. Can't keep him happy. It's the next day. Hello. Welcome to the next day. This is a good year for bobbleheads. Got some nice ones. Sad ending to a season. I know nobody here wants to hear me talk about baseball. Pumpkin hasn't been on for a while. Is she over here? Uh, pumpkins. Where's the cat? I see Charlie. Hey, Charlie. You've been enjoying having the plants inside. Chewing all over them. There's Pumpkin. How you doing, Punk? Where'd you go? Where'd she go? Pumpkin. There she get. What is, you, what is wrong with you? I'm so sorry for waking you up. Say hello. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Love you, Pumpkin. Such a sweetheart. There you go, run off. Always nice spending time with you too, Pumpkin. Yeah, Charlie's been chewing on the plants. Mostly the metanella. He really likes the metanella. Must have a nice flavor to it. Stay away from the things that aren't good for him. What was I doing? Oh yeah, the planters. That's what we were gonna talk about is maybe doing some planters. Here's the grow space. There was a big lack of warning with that cold snap that came in, so the plants just came in and Hit the ground. I have some new shelving coming in that's going in over here. It hasn't come in yet. Well, part of it's come in yet, but not all of it. So for now, they can just sit on the ground. That's fine. They should be right at home on the ground. They're plants, right? So I did some thinking about the planters and um, I said, you know, why not? Let's just go for it. Oh, oh, barf, it stinks in here. The cabbage. Ugh. We got some spring grove arbor. I can't know. I have to unload the car. Look at the plants moved around to the back. Some leaves make a noise over here. That's a that smell. It's just it's like a fart in the face. Oh, he's excited. He sees car keys. Yeah, I know. I know. It's so exciting. You're not going anywhere though. I unload everything and then get these planted up. 
they should be very quick and easy to do. Doesn't that already just look so much nicer? They're not even in the containers and I'm loving it. I just wanted something for some winter interest. I know that I named off a lot of reasons not to do it, but it wasn't convincing enough for me. I figured I should go ahead and do it anyways. Since I'm considering these to be more of a winter container, meaning that the, what's going in here needs to be mostly evergreen and very low maintenance, I don't plan on using fresh mix. It's mostly old potting soil in there and I just realized that I should not be wearing this shirt. Multiple options here with the evergreen. I could just leave it in this container, which would actually make it easier to water it during the winter time because I have more of a focused area to get the water down in there. But it also means that this can dry out a lot faster. I usually have better luck if I go ahead and just unpop them all the way, even though I'm not planning on those roots doing anything, I'm not going to bother trying to score this or anything like that for the time being because, well, like I said, this isn't gonna grow, at least not with any significance. Got some more soil in there so that that can be up more level because I have some cabbage, as y'all saw, and I smelled. That'll go around the outside perimeter there. Is that right? Looks good to me. What do we think? Simple and practical. I'll explain why. Here's how I was able to convince myself that it was okay to do this. I needed spring grove arbs. Needed three of them, the nursery had two. There's a spot back here that I wanna put a little hedge of these in. And I figured, well, why not just get them now in the fall and then they can go in the ground in the spring. And hopefully I'll be able to find another one that's about the same size. I like it. Everything in here should be mostly evergreen here in zone six, obviously, hopefully. The arb that's in here, this is a Osaka pink cabbage. I wanted the whites, couldn't find them anywhere. The white, well, it looks like this, but it's much more vibrant white. These will color up some more as the temperature is cool and the sun is more intense on them. And then just Creep and Jenny. Not a lot of choices at the nursery right now. I would have loved to have done hellebores in between each one of these cabbages. I think that would have looked awesome, but didn't see them around. It's not really the right time of year for them. And hellebores are they're kind of pricey. I don't think I would want those as something that'd be considering an annual. The arb, not an annual, but these, I don't really have any intentions of carrying the cabbage and the creeping jenny through into the springtime. I mean, hopefully they still look good in the spring. Usually these are plants that will look good throughout most of the winter time. Then generally around late winter or so, they start to get sad looking. It just depends on the purpose. <laughs> Depends on the precipitation. These are still going to need to be watered in the dead of winter, probably once to twice a month. I have to just keep an eye on them. We have cold winters here and they're extremely windy. So it'll be important to make sure that I also move them. They're not going to stay here to have a nice outline to the pool cover. That doesn't make sense. Every winter I'm bugged by this dead corner right here. It drives me nuts not having anything there. So I'm going to take one of these and put them in that corner right there during the winter time or really just once the pool's covered up. And then I'll center the other one over here in between the two bamboo planters. I think it worked out well. Not super flashy, nothing spectacular, but there are plants I needed. Add some height, some nice fresh green things to have out here. And I just kind of missed planting a pot. I haven't really done a lot of containers this year. So it felt nice to get my hands dirty and just plop some plants into a container without having to put much thought into it and just go, hey, this is gonna look nice. You really can't go wrong when you're working with the cabbages and the kales. They always come out looking good. The lighting was a little bit better right now. It's getting darker earlier and earlier. But on that note, I should probably wrap this up. I still need to edit this video. It comes out tomorrow morning. I'm way behind. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi. I'm gonna keep everybody posted. So what goes on with the Alexander Palm? Well, by keep everybody posted, I mean, I'll be following up with it in next week's vlog. Hopefully they can get out here Monday to get it. And if not, I don't wanna talk about it. There are plenty of things I can do to try and protect it. It's 20 feet tall, so options are somewhat limited there, but I've figure that out if I have to. Protected plenty of palms in my days. The pool does keep things a little bit extra warm out here. I don't know if it's gonna keep things five degrees warmer, but we will see. So far this fall, the temperatures in the backyard on my little sensors have been about five to eight degrees warmer than the surrounding area. I don't know. Like I said, comment down below what's going on in your gardens, your plants inside, ready to go ahead and chill out. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.